It's your girl, Claudia Jordan, and we are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. <laughs> so sit back, relax, and get ready for this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. Ah, what's up, Claudia? Hey, hey, back to reality. And please welcome Funky Dineva. What's up, Q? Oh, what's up, me? And don't welcome me because you, Al, Joyce, Justin, Destiny ain't none of y'all no good. So many people. What? So many people. I just want y'all to know that everybody else got back home yesterday. Ask me what time I got home. 30 I minutes ago. Back home yesterday. Buddy. 30 I'm minutes home. ago. I almost didn't even come to this damn job. Them bitches left me in Houston. <laughs> they left me in Houston. Good thing I got good credit in a credit card. I had to get a hotel. Been for myself in a city where I don't even know nobody. And I had to fly home today. What you mean you don't know nobody? You went to dinner with a friend. I ain't got to that boy at the meet and greet. <laughs> Are you really going to complain to me about your travel? <laughs> Y'all were flown in. I had to drive four hours up and back. So we got back around the same time. How about that? But are you okay? Actually, actually you okay? none of y'all. You? I'm you fine. Okay? I'm good. Mm -hmm. Did you die? Did you die? I didn't. I had fun. See? You probably got a little piece of something out there, too. No, I did not. I got a little piece of food. Shouts out to the Lost and Found <laughs> down in Midtown Houston. The food was really good. I'll definitely be back there when I come back in town. What were you going to say, Al? I said, at least you guys are home, sleeping in your own bed. You know, I'm on a 14-day tour, and I still have D.C. I'm in D.C. now, but I still have New York. I won't be able to sleep in my bed until Sunday. But you're in a nice hotel bed, though, right? I mean, you ain't staying in no damn dive. <laughs> Sometimes, you know. All right. Well, are y'all recovered from Houston? Because I'm not. I'm exhausted because we turned up in Houston. I, I, I'm doing good. I, I'm doing good. I'm still on a high from Houston. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a good time. Definitely still on a high from Houston, but I don't know. You hear my voice. You hear this nose running. You may hear a cough or two. I think it's from all the meet and greets in the last three cities I've been in and the lack of sleep. Lack of sleep, smoking hookah, drinking, dehydrating your vocal cords, no sleep. Like yeah. we are, I'm feeling it today. We ain't 25 anymore. And that includes you too, Funky. We all <laughs> old that. <laughs> Not me, girl. I, listen, I'm the only one here, bright eyed and bushy tail. All oh, my voice here. I hit my note, baby. So now uh, I'm young and supple over here. Not today, uh, Miss Claudia. Uh, okay. Well, T Tish TB said, I can't decide if I enjoy them in their boxes or in the studio more. And Chosen One said, Funky, aren't you a rich white woman? And oh, it, that still don't you know, mean I want to be left in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are y'all drinking tonight? Yeah, um, the only thing that was missing for me in Houston was my buttery Chardonnay, but I got it back, everybody. Me and my buttery Chardonnay have rekindled, and we're going to have a good night tonight. Q? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm drinking uh, vodka ginger ale with a splash of cranberry with a little bit of side of uh, chocolate brownie or uh, reefer. I can't do it. I can't do three nights in a row messing with y'all. And every time I'm, Al kidnapped me one of the nights and made me stay out way longer than I wanted to, I am exhausted. And after this, I'm going back to bed. I'm tired, y'all. I can't do it. All right. But I am excited about these topics because we have a lot more to talk about. Let's get into this. Jada Pinkett Smith responded to sexual claims involving Will Smith and Dwayne Martin. Now, on an episode of The Breakfast Club, Jada said, it's ridiculous and nonsense. And this is a person that tried a money shakedown that didn't work. We're going to take legal action because it's one thing to have your opinion about somebody versus making up salacious, malicious stories. What are your thoughts on the Smiths taking legal action? And once you do that, like, if there's anything that's true, it's all going to come out in discovery. Al, what do you think about this? Look, they have to. They have to. They have to do it to save face. But let me tell you something. I'm not listening to anything Jada Pickett Smith says to me because we already know that she's good at living a lie. And let's just break that all the way down. Remember once one day we covered where she was saying in her book tour that she was not into same sex. 
that you know that was not her her thing however later on if you read the book she talks about she actually went through a period in hollywood where she was into same sex but she put that to rest the other question is how would she know what will is into i think a better person to ask if you want my my advice we should ask miss tisha campbell what's going on because we know she had a horrible divorce from Dwayne, and she was it was very very ugly and it almost ruined her according to you know her her according to her so i think we should get the real advice from Dwayne from uh tisha campbell to see what's going on or we can always revisit the lisa ray story that's where I think the real tea lies if we want to know the truth. I don't think we'll ever know the truth if we're waiting up for, for Jada Pickett Smith to tell us. Jada saying she wasn't the same sex. That's like me saying I'm out in the gambling. Like, get out of here, Because <laughs> I've seen it. Um, Q, what are your thoughts? I saw you, I see you over there smirking, looking like you want to just let loose, or you're trying deciding to unlock your better self or be funky down evil. What you what's the what's the decision? Where you going? What you going with? <laughs> no, uh, what I was gonna say. Um, wait, what story we on? Oh, Will here goes the edibles. No, Will and Jay. You know? Oh Lord, it's gonna be one of those shows. Jesus Christ! Oh, what's the story about again? Oh, who okay. they gonna sue? This one gonna... I had was finished thing because I had wrote it on my hand. Oh my God! Are they gonna sue? Are they gonna sue Tasha K or the person who said it? That's what I'd be most interested in knowing. No, absolutely. To Al's point, y'all, I'm not high. <laughs> To Al's point, legal action is what has to be done in this situation because, like we've already covered before, this is somebody who's got kicked out of the club. That's just being defamatory and, and, and playing in their name. I do believe when Jada says it's some type of money shakedown, it's always a money shakedown or an emotional shakedown of some sort. Um, but legal action is the right thing to take in this situation. I just wonder, again, is it going to be all on the guy or is it going to be on the person who helped the guy disseminate this information? Also, of course I heard this. God. I just want to ask you, Claudia, if you were married to a man who was accused of being in a relationship with another man, wouldn't both of the men who were involved just come out and say, look, he's a liar? Well, that's what I was about to say. Um, Dwayne Martin. Hi, Dwayne. I'm going to call you, Dwayne, because I have your number. Um, maybe we can give you a platform to talk on the show and maybe you can come out and defend yourself. Because I, 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 to be honest, I've heard the rumors about Dwayne and, and Will Smith for years. Anyone that lived out there heard everybody talking about this. But when I've been around him, I never got those vibes from him. But then again, I don't know what the vibes are anymore anyways. Like, I, I you don't know what people are really doing. But I never got that from him. But um, I would like to invite Dwayne Martin here to Fox Soul to speak on it because I haven't seen him defend himself or defend him and his good friend. I know they're good friends. I know they vacation together. They hang out. They've done. They've worked together. Um, we've heard from everybody but Dwayne. Like you said, Al, Tisha Campbell has said some things. Lisa Ray has said some things. Now this assistant has said some things. Will and Dwayne are the ones that haven't said anything. And we are here to provide the safe space and the platform for any of them, either of them, to come on and talk about it. Because I would love to hear from them instead of everybody else talking. And this assistant is shady as hell, don't you think? With friends like that, I mean, I don't know what the point is of him doing this. I don't know. All right, uh, Julian uh, Faber says, so Tisha Campbell can know what Dwayne was doing, but Jada can't know what Will was doing. Child, bye. And Nakia Colbert said, come on, Claudia, get the real tea from your Cocktails of Queens co-star. And Deja Monet, this is a good question. Why does Jada always have to address things? Will need to speak for himself. Because she established herself as the mouthpiece of the damn relationship and a lesbian committee. Mm. Y'all been know that lady was eating more than Pizza Hut. Okay? <laughs> so, so cut it out. And that's probably the third book that's going to be wrote. Surprise! We both was gay and just got married for Hollywood. Like, that's probably going to be the third book. Right. Now, that's what was believable in my book. In the news surrounding Krishan Rock allegedly assaulting James Wright channel, Chanel, Tamar Braxton's tour manager is now adding his two cents. Check this out. He did nothing to her. He was consoling her and she popped him a couple of times. And that's why his face looked like it looked. And if you are in the public eye multiple times like you are, you would not show your face either. I was there when the police came. I was there when the police left. 
As of now, Tamar, her best friend, James Wright Channel, and uh, her tour manager have all spoken out on social media about the assault. All right, y'all. Should, should Tamar's team focus on uh, filing a police report instead of sharing the same story? I, I want to say real quick, we were trying to get James. We were really close to having him on the show today. But his lawyer said, just relax, just hold off on it. But we did have a conversation. He told me that Krishan was in the room. He was She was upset about something. He was consoling her. And then out of nowhere, she punched him. And he was not even arguing with her. That's what he told me. And he gave me permission to talk about it. And that's what he said. So what do y'all think about this? Key, let's go to you first. Okay, at this point, it, it, it's getting to a point where I'm starting to actually not care. All right? Mm -hmm. I don't need to see any more live videos. What's the objective here? Is it to just further throw dirt on her name? Or are we sending her snag tooth ass to jail? Okay, because if we send her to jail, then the next thing I want to see is a police report. Now, I, I'm hearing stuff on the internet. How don't you know he, fi he filed a police report? How don't y'all know? I saw somebody say they they filing it, but she lived in one city, was performing in another. I don't care. I don't want to care. The next thing, if we're going to hear another live from y'all or get another video from y'all, needs to be y'all walking out of a police station or courthouse or somebody confirming that a police report has been filed. We don't need to hear from the janitor, the cook, wardrobe, the hair, or the makeup lady. All we want is a police report. I did hear that uh, there is a police report that they did call the police that night. But I guess that part of the story keeps getting kind of like overlooked. So I do want to say that. But... Okay. Al, what do you think? What have you heard? Well, I think, Claudia, there's two things here. You got to know that there's a difference between calling the police and pressing charges. I'm like Q on this. Either press charges or stop talking about it. Stop talking about it. We can't go over how many different ways that Kush, Krishan um, is unhinged, how, how many different ways she's been disrespectful or whatever, inconsiderate, whatever you want to call her. You can't call her anything more until you've decided to press charges. Because at the end of the day, one part of the team says that she was invited and she was supposed to, she was supposed to appear on, on stage and she missed a cue. Other part of the team said she was never invited and she was never slated to perform. Which is it, y'all? At this point, this is way too much noise around this little bit of an incident. It is so weird that then there's not one cohesive story. Right. I get the two different sides, like Krishan's camp versus Tamar's camp, but I would think all of Tamar's camp, all those friends and the, the, the organizer, the promoter, Tamar, James, would all be on the same page. Um, it is a hot mess, and I could see some cameras was rolling. This would be good tea, but I, I, I would like to see this resolved. And James is actually a good person. I, I hate that this happened to him. I do believe he was hit. hit. All right, moving on. Here's some tea that called for a clapback, courtesy of yours truly. Oh, this is the story we're doing. All right, after Little Kim announced the release of her new memoir, some people commented on how Kim compared her pre-sale success to the Bible of the downloads. She was having fun with it. Foxy Brown decided to enter the chat, trying to clown Little Kim and her book, so uh, she put Bible and LOL, like was laughing. So I ended up commenting on the blog, right? And saying kind of like, leave Kim alone. She don't bother nobody. And, you know, this is why your karma's messed up. Well, Foxy Brown got in my DMs. And so, you know, I wasn't backing down. She was like, someone should have warned you about me. You nothing ass bitch. I was like, oh, you want to go there with me? Anyways, why do you think Foxy has such a hair up her ass about can't, anytime news comes out about Little Kim, she does this. It's not just a one-time thing with me. This isn't special. It's all every opportunity when Kim's name comes up, here comes Foxy Brown. Because she got put out of one of the largest, biggest, and most successful music camps in the history of hip-hop and rap. Remember, she was a part of that XXL uh, magazine where they said President Carter's cabinet and... and, and, and um, uh, Jay-Z said, look, these are the next big up and coming rappers signed to my label. He mentioned LeBron James, he's on the cover. Kanye West is on the cover. Jay-Z is on the cover and Foxy Brown. Now, if you look back at that, at that time, Jay-Z was doing many, many songs with her. People had also talked about back in that day, Jay-Z was also writing for her. 
I think that she has got to be really, really upset that her career is nowhere close to the rest of the people that were signed and promoted to be the next big thing. And she's salty because she was there the same time that Little Kim was building her career. Now, fortunately, Little Kim is still here. Little Kim is still relevant. Foxy Brown is just a past thought. I get being upset that your career is not where you want it to be. We've all been there, but why you you coming for one person all the time? It's constant. Q, what do you think about this? Pain and trauma, you know, pain and trauma, and especially when Little Kim represents Foxy's pain and trauma. If what all out is saying is true, I was just blown by the fact that they were still having beef at forty something, near fifty years old, which is just very lame. Especially considering the fact that, like Al said, Foxy, you're not even in the business anymore. No. You're, you're not even in the business anymore. So what are we doing here? Um, they too old for this. Well, Foxy's too old for this. First of all, Foxy need to be worried about allegedly what Remy Ma said about she got death from untreated gonorrhea. We don't even know if Foxy could hear out of both of her damn ears while she talking out the side of her neck. <laughs> oh and why are you worrying about me? You should fix the missing side tooth. I have no respect well, for you. You did start with that lady like you always do with people in the comments. You know, I know you, you ain't you, talking. You, you, you live I know in the comments. You, you make your videos about people you every live, single day. You live in the comments. And you started with that lady, Claudia, so she should have said no, something. No, I was defending my friend, Little Kim. I was at her baby shower. That's my girl. And I said, leave Little Kim alone. And she came in my DMs, called me a nothing ass bitch, and I returned the favor. Anyways, she'll be all right. Hi, Foxy. If you can hear me, uh, let's squash this beef. All right, coming up. That was me. Coming up next, the slums of Florida are slumming, and later find out why Larsa Pippen is side eyeing her her fellow castmate. Stay tuned. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie, the freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. You're not gonna get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff, like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. What do you think the most bougie state in the United States is? Is this black bougie or white bougie? <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. McMillan and Mara. I'm not black bougie. I'm trying to be. <laughs> You're just bougie. I'm just too poor. <laughs> Every Thursday. Listen, if I had more money, I would be so bougie. You black bougie adjacent. All your friends are black bougie. Exactly. <laughs> On Fox Soul. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I'm, living, I'm living vicariously through them. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Hey, welcome back to the show. The soulmates are in the chat, like saying, do you like asking if people like the show better in the studio or in the com uh, at home? I think they like when we can read the comments, but they like how we look in the studio. Soulmates, what do you like better in these boxes or in the studio? We want to know. Okay. Yeah, I know I'd be in the comments. I know I do. I only work one hour a day. Okay. Y'all are right. Okay. Whether good, bad, ugly, or just plain dumb, the tea is always overflowing with crazy news stories out of the state of Florida. That's why we're giving you the 411 in What the Florida. 
All right. A man is accused of killing his 86 year old father by allegedly dragging and running over his father with his truck multiple times before leaving the scene. Based on the arrest report, the defendant then left the scene in the vehicle, came back on foot, and he was acting as if he did not know what took place. What are your thoughts on this craziness? I'm going to go to Al real quick, and we got to get a quick comment from Al. And then, Funky, you try to defend this nonsense out of your state. Al, what do you think about this story? First of all, his father's 86 years old. What is he doing down at the bar drinking with his son? Anyway, I just thought that this story was so unfortunate, and it, 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 it's, it, it reeks of sick. Because he ran over his father after his father fell down in front of the truck. And then he backed up, ran over him, went forward, ran over him, backed up, ran over him, went forward, ran over him. Like, and then to come back and pretend like you did nothing, that says psychopath to me. And not to mention, I was thinking, oh, they must have been at like Q's bar or something, you know, down where the Honda cars are. But no, when I went online and I Googled our bar, our bar is actually a very cool bar. It got a 4.4 rating out of five from 1,700 people that reviewed the bar. So it's not like a hole in the wall where people do these types of things. So all in all, I'm just like, okay, it is official. The people of Florida are nuts. Kim? That man ran over his daddy because he was supposed to use his social security check to, to pay for the tab. Oh, <laughs> okay. God. And daddy hadn't cashed his check. I don't even know why this is a story. That man 86, he lived long enough. <laughs> okay. But you don't want to go out like that being <laughs> run over <laughs> multiple <laughs> times. No, he lived long enough. No, he don't live long enough. Hell, how long y'all want him to damn live? <laughs> he was gonna die next year any damn way. No, in, in all seriousness, it's giving it's giving mental illness mixed with inebriation to me, um, especially down to the came back and acted like nothing. I don't know which was worse, the coming back and acting like nothing happened or the running over on multiple times, but one of those should qualify him for mental illness. I, I hit a cat by accident, like a cat ran and got into my back tie. I felt so bad, and it you feel it, like... yeah. Imagine how that feels, like the feeling of running over your dad multiple times. Like you was mad, mad. And then yeah. coming back to check out to see who saw, who, who, what's going on. Mm. There. Like you said, if he would have just waited till next year till he died, he could have got some kind of life, like insurance or something. All right. Another Florida man is in the hot seat after allegedly crashing his vehicle into a subdivision while trying to flee from authority. Damn, authorities. Timothy Allen Hogue is now facing a laundry list of charges. It in addition to his prior criminal history that consists of 31 felonies and 18 dis misdemeanors. Funky, does this past criminal history, does your past criminal history top that? That's... That's just incredible. First off, production, can you guys put that picture up of the suspect again? <laughs> he must have been an FX makeup artist in a past life because the way that accident blood splattered all over his face, it really does look like a very good Walking Dead makeup job. So kudos to the spirits living within. Um, my past criminal history, well, listen, I got solicitation, prostitution. Oh, my God. <laughs> what else I got? Uh, but those got thrown out. You won't find no mugs out of those. The only other thing you'll find is driving with a suspended license while having a bad tag and no insurance. That's what I went to jail for that one time. So no, this does not top my criminal history. But I told you earlier, this man needs to be let go as well because he's got extra spirits within. It's the spirit of a bomb-ass makeup artist in him. No, Q, the reason why his face is so bloody is because he went to... They chased him to a cul-de-sac, and he didn't know he had gone down into a cul-de-sac, and he was going 80 miles per hour down into the cul-de-sac. And so the cops just stayed at the beginning of the cul-de-sac because they knew he had to come back up the cul-de-sac, and he ran into the police officers at 80 miles per hour. Now, I really think that he should be thrown under the jail for his behavior, especially with 31 felonies and 18 misdemeanors. He should be in jail with no chance of getting an ankle bracelet, but a production will hold that picture of him up right there. It's funny that if you read the tattoo on his neck, it actually it actually reads all gas and no brakes. And that's exactly what he lived by. Ah. 
That is exactly the type of thief he is. That's the t exactly the type of citizen that he is. And I think they should give him all the gas and no breaks in the local state penitentiary instead of the local jail. Yeah, white people crazy is like, <laughs> like they just advertise it with the, t well, actually we do too sometimes. You know what? I take it back. It ain't a white people thing. It's a crazy people thing. Uh, JZK 1990 said, that ain't nothing but the devil. And Alika Moon said the spirit of a demon is in him. He does look like he's got a little bit yeah. of demonicness in his eyes. All right, a Florida man is facing up to 18 years in prison after he allegedly failed to steal a couple's multi-million dollar home and allegedly tried to hire a hitman to kill the family so they couldn't testify against him in court. Alexander Lashinsky allegedly created a fake charity organization to file the fraudulent warranty deed in hopes of transforming, transferring the home's ownership to himself, but the couple caught wind of the false reports and filed charges. Funky. What do you think about this? Is this high-level scamming? What do you think this you is? You know what? No, no, now, let me tell you something. This is high-level scamming. And Now, I already told y'all about it. If you hit the lick one time, never hit it again, leave it alone. This is lesson number two I want to introduce to you about the lick. Don't hit a lick that's too damn high. Yes, yeah, because oh. he would hit this lick one time. But rule number two is don't hit a lick that's just too ambitious for your skill sets because that's <laughs> what he did. He, you know, he was doing good when he filed the fake charity or whatever. When you do the fake charity scam, and don't ask me how I know, you supposed to do little credit card scams and check scams and money. Okay, okay. When you, when you, you, when you, you, when you stealing land from people, baby. You got to be a corporation with investors in all types of situations like that. So he just should have stuck to the rivers and the lakes that he was used to. But unfortunately, he got to go to jail. He wanted to steal their house and kill them so they couldn't <laughs> test. Like, he, that was very ambitious. You wanted to pull off two felonies, well, three felonies. <laughs> Al, what do you think? I'm with you on this one. What is it, Q, stick to the lakes and the streams that you used to? Yes. It's not actually, like you said, when you do a lick, do the lick one time. His... He wanted to do. He wanted to do oceans. Q. Okay. To the tone. He did fraudulent warranty warrants, right? <clears throat> warranty deeds. He did fraudulent warranty deeds to the tune of three hundred million dollars worth of properties. And he ran up against this family, and his family's like, "Wait a minute, something does not sound right." So we're going to go to the police officers now. When they forgot to move, when they didn't want to move forward with him anymore, what he did instead of passing them over, letting it go away, he decided he wanted to harass them. He was going to send them letters. He was going to send them emails. He was going to send them faxes talking about your warranty deed. You have to turn it over to me and my organization. Now, what made it worse is they were already on his ass for doing a fraudulent PPP loan. So he was already on the radar. Now, to top it off, Q. He done hit this lick, PPP law, hit mm -hmm. this lick for a couple of hundred million dollars in property fraud, right? Warranty deed fraud. And what did he do? He got on the phone to try to find someone to take this family out because they were the ones that were able to, quote, stick with his story to charge him. And in his trying to get somebody to kill him, he was on the phone with the CA, which was a confidential informant for the United States government. And mm -hmm. that's how they called him. Once again, Florida people. Coming up next is Larsa Pippen dealing with trust issues. And later find out why Benzino is calling out Buster Rhymes. He is mad. Keep it locked. We'll be right back and tell you why. What do you think the most bougie state in the United States is? Is this black bougie or white bougie? <laughs> There's a difference. McMillan and Mara. I'm not black bougie. I'm trying to be. <laughs> You're just bougie. I'm just too poor. <laughs> Every Thursday. Listen, if I had more money, I would be so bougie. You black bougie adjacent. All your friends are black bougie. Exactly. <laughs> On Fox Soul. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I'm, living, I'm living vicariously through them. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid? My kid knows it's dangerous. 
Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Worried about your friend but don't know how to reach out? You can say how while you will get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. TGIF. Lil Wayne was not pleased with the reveal of his wax figure. He tweeted, sorry, Wax Museum, but that bleep ain't me. Live and interactive. Brittany T said, that ain't Lil Weezy, that's Lil Asthma. Hold on, call it. You, you gotta see what Poppy said. Hell, the wax figure looks cleaner and better than the real Lil Wayne. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Serving up all the tea. You so messy, Q. You are. Nah. Join the chat on Fox Soul. Yeah, I don't make the comments. I just read them, honey. Oh, that's true. God. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, listen, we are a little under the weather right now, so I think this is something that we might will be using and you might want to use too. Now, have you ever been on the hunt for a new doctor and ask literally everyone you know for their recommendation? You know, for a doctor who actually gets you, listens to you, and makes you feel super comfortable? And finally, after weeks of searching, you find the one. Only Not only do they do all of that, but they're also close by. You're both Aries, Moon, Libra, Rising, because that's important, right? Everything lines up. So you call their office, and they have an appointment available. But then the receptionist tells you this perfect doctor doesn't take your insurance. Then you can wipe your tears away, put away the ice cream, and head on over to ZocDoc to find out and book the doctor who is right for you and takes your insurance. Now, ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. Now, you can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're in, you are searching for. Listen, this is a great, great situation, especially for people in the entertainment I, let me take that back, especially for people that move around a lot that are just constantly in new cities. So, Al, I want to ask you what you think about this. You went from D.C., Absolutely. you were in New York, and now you're in L.A. Yep. How do you That's like it? Good. You hit it on the head, Claudia. You know I'm on a 14-day tour. I have not been home to my bed in 14 days. Started out in San Francisco, went to Chapel Hill, went to Houston. Now I'm in D.C., and I have a cold. So this is perfect for anyone who travels a lot. Also, someone who also, like you said, in the entertainment industry as well. Um, now, tomorrow, when I'm going to find a place, I can go on ZocDoc and find, my, find me a primary care physician that or a or a urgent care, because they do urgent cares as well, that can take care of this little bit of cold that I got. We have someone in the chat, Z, uh, D in there says, I use Zoc, I'm sorry, Katrina, I use ZocDoc, thanks to y'all. We have a few people, a few soulmates in here. D love, I use ZocDoc. Thank you. Prayer hands. All right. Go to ZocDoc.com slash T and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor. That's Z O C D O C dot com slash T. ZocDoc.com slash T. I am definitely going to be using this because I am good to not have a regular doctor. So I, I need to use this to, to find one in my new city which I've been for a while. Promotional consideration furnished by ZocDoc. Let's get back to some more stories. Before this Lars and Pippa story, Al, you said that Shirley Strawberry's uh, husband that's incarcerated was talking about teeth. Yeah, he's he talking oh, about Not him, him, not him, the mistress. The mistress, oh, the mistress. on that YouTube show called uh, Call from Prison. And she talked about, I mean, that's what a, a fan hit me up in my DM and said that she's talking about us. She watches TGIF. From Jaya? From jail. No, the mistress, the mistress watches it. From jail. Is she, she in jail too? She was. Oh, we gotta get the T. They both got arrested together. Remember we did the picture of them and you was like, oh, she looks slow. Oh, I forgot. No, we you know what? That wasn't them. That wasn't them. That was another couple. I don't lie on that lady that quick. Oh, that no. edible done kicked in, didn't it? That, that no, it didn't. <laughs> Go on to the next thing. All right. According to sources, there may be trouble in Jordan Paradise. After Larsa Pippen discovered photos of her, the Real Housewives of Miami castmate Julia Lemigova in Marcus's phone. 
The source shared that Julia asked Marcus to take a few photos of her at BravoCon, but once Larsa came across the images, she got a little jealous and alleged that Julia was trying to seduce her man. What are your thoughts on this tea? Mm, Q? This whole story reads like a plant from a publicist. The, 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 the whole thing did. I, I mean... I, I I guess if I wanted to pretend like this wasn't for a storyline of some type of social media clout, then this is what my response would be. Larsa comes off like an insecure woman, like she's going to lose her cash cow. She don't want him to talk to any other woman and is being super duper controlling. Now, depending on the relationship that Larsa has with old girl will determine if it's weird or not that she asked him to take photos of her. Typically, when people do that, they already have one another's phone number. Oh, Claudia, take a picture of me. Send right. it to me when we finish eating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do they have that type of relationship or is it, I, I, you know, she's really trying to seduce your man. Laura's a quiet as a scam. I don't think there's too many people out there jumping over chairs to get to him um, for whatever dog or reason. So you might be good, girl. Uh, Claudia, what do you think? I, I, I agree. I've, I've never heard anyone fawning over this man. I actually saw an interview with the two of them together, and it seemed like he's way more into her than she's even into him. I was getting a vibe where I was like, is she just going through the motions? Like, did you see the interview? Did I send it to y'all? She was just like, no. he was talking about the wedding and all that oh, kind yeah. of stuff. Oh, yeah. She was just and, looking. And she was like. Well, let me take. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You know, the interesting part is, is I think Julia and Larsa got some history, because let me tell you why. All right. Allegedly, Julia went up to the uh, went up to Jordan and said, hey, do you mind taking some pictures for me? Because I'm going to be on the stage. And he agreed. Now, after it was over, she then backtracked and went to Larsa and said, yo, um, your man took pictures of me. I asked your man to take pictures of me. Uh, before I went on stage, do you mind telling him to send them to me? Mm, that's a good old stank way of saying, yo, man, looking at me, or I, yo, you ain't, you ain't got home locked down like you thought. That's how I interpret it. Like maybe she set her up to create this environment to make her feel that way. And he got caught in the middle because he's young and dumb. Now, Larsa did, however, not respond back from her. So that's the part that kind of feels like, like you said, this is a little bit, I smell a little bit of a storyline here. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Keep a lock because coming up next, Benzino is calling out Buster Rhymes and later Kiki Palmer's mother. Oh my goodness. I don't know if y'all heard the recording, but you're going to hear us talk about it when we come back. We'll be right back. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. G-I-F. Jason Derulo, who is speaking out against sexual harassment claims. We sit here before you deeply offended. Live and interactive. I agree with Miss Hollywood in the chat. She says he's reading a teleprompter. Listen, I know bad acting when I see it because I've done it. <laughs> I'm deeply offended. <laughs> I'm going to give you Angela Bassett deeply offended. And I'm deeply offended. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Oscar. And I'm deeply offended. Guilty. <laughs> on Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation 
to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, let's get into the story. Benzino is calling out Busta Rhymes for having his daughter, Coyla Ray, half naked in his music video. Benzino said, you know you don't do no bleeping video with my daughter half naked, and you know you a grown-ass bleeping man. Does Benzino have a right to be upset, Al? I mean, I think he has a right. He's her dad. I mean, but I think he's being very silly and immature about it. He knows what this industry is. He knows for a young woman, like for her to be successful nowadays, if, if you use the blueprint that's going around town, she's got to take a little bit of clothes off and she's got to play that sex puss. And that's exactly what she's doing. And I really like her. She's so talented. But you know what I thought was interesting was what she shared on the Angie Martinez interview, where she felt like, hey, she feels like, her dad's a little bit jealous of her and her success in the business. And if we're honest, she's been in the business and more successful than he's been in the business as a whole. So I can see that, but I'm not a dad. I'm not a dad. So I can't really speak entirely to the whole space. But if I was a dad and I saw my daughter doing well, she's still behaving, you know, she's not really being thought as she's not on only fans and all that. And if he's really giving her the guidance that she needs, then he should know that she's just doing it in order to build her brand and to be successful in the music industry. Sierra Thompson said she was naked all the time before that, though. Also, she's a, a grown woman. And Rosemary Watson said, isn't his daughter grown? She, he, he should talk to her. Q, what do you think? On top of damn being grown, Biz, you don't need to shut the hell up. It wasn't he the founder and the CEO of the Source magazine and been in hip hop industry shit for 30, 40 years now? Hasn't he been around a lot of somebody's daughters dressed that way? And it would be different if the video included Busta Rhymes and Coily Ray filming a sex scene. All right. Then I understand, okay, you big grown man touching on my daughter. I understand that. Outside of this, this was her putting on a play. She was shooting a music video. It's not like Buster was touching her inappropriately or anything. Benzino, you've been, Benzino, you have directly contributed to the business being like this when it comes to women. So you understand this better than anyone. And it is unfortunate because it seems like anytime Benzino is mentioned in the press, these days is for drugs, transsexuals, or his daughter. And it's like lately he's been clinging to the daughter play. And Benzino, if you really cared about your daughter, stop doing things that's going to get your name back in the media in relation to your daughter. Because she don't already told us she don't like that. I think Benzino is really hurt by her making it obvious that she doesn't like him. And she probably loves him. You know, you love someone, but you don't like him. Mm-hmm. Like you got love some right and then i did see something i was watching a little bit of an interview with him today and he was saying how he feels like the industry is turning her or making her do this and maybe that's a father that doesn't want to believe that his daughter would really feel that negatively about him and that's got to be hurtful i don't know but um I, as for the video with buster rhymes i did watch i did watch it i she always dresses sexy but because of her body like she's not a voluptuous girl it always looks cute it doesn't look skanky on her it looks cute like tomboy sexy mm -hmm. and i was happy to see that ben, uh that buster rhymes did not have his hands on her there was no interaction between the two of them i could understand if it was i would definitely feel away if i was uh, you know if i was benzino i'd feel like you guys are my peers like give me a heads mm -hmm. up okay like, hey, you know i'm about to shoot the scene mm -hmm. with your daughter i do i see his point in that but um ah, you just don't know what it is between them you know yeah. it, from the outside looking in we could say he's je he's jealous but then he also did have a very successful magazine and award show for a long time. So I don't know. I don't know how that would feel to see your daughter or your child surpass you or really be popping. And you're like, have y'all forgotten about me? Because I think he feels she doesn't attribute any of that to him. You know? All right. In the news, plastic surgery has gone wrong. A Washington state woman traveled to Mexico for a breast list, but claimed she ended up with <laughs> breast implants and an unwanted BBL. <laughs> The woman told officials that the medical facility performed the wrong surgery and then demanded more money and held her at the facility until she and her daughter paid. Oh my God. What are your thoughts on this unfortunate situation? Who wants to go first? Al, uh, you want to go? 
Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll go, listen, this story, we've said this a hundred times on this show, at least I have, do not go to these other countries to get these procedures. Now, I understand it's, it's cheaper, but you just don't understand the language. You don't understand the customs. You don't know if they're certified. You don't know the history of the doctor. And if something happens, you end up in a situation like this. And let me tell you something, this could have gotten really ugly because what we found out was this particular woman, because of her age, she got an infection, not because of her age, I'm sorry, she got an infection because the site was unsanitary. And in her dealing with the infection, she couldn't get to the antibiotics because they were holding her hostage because she wouldn't pay for the breasts. She wanted a lip. They gave her all new breasts and a new booty. Now, this lady going to be walking around looking like a stripper from uh, Magic City in Atlanta at freaking 90 years old. That just ain't cute, and it's unnecessary. Pay the extra money. Make sure it's in a sanitary oh. in the United States, and and yo, you wouldn't be looking like a stripper for Magic City mm -hmm. if you had done it in the United States and paid a little bit extra. Mm, imagine you go for one thing, you get two other things, and they give it, and they give you the bill. Q, what do you think about it? You know what? It's, it's so not funny. This lady's probably going to feel so insecure, but doggone it, I want to see it after it's all said and done. Them people know this was a show. <laughs> they, and there's no way in hell it was a clerical error or anything of the sort. They robbed this lady because they know good and goddamn well that <laughs> Sue Bell Harrison did not come in and want no damn BBL. Right. Like, they, they know damn well that lady. And what did they... And, and here's the funny thing. Because they gave her just a BBL real quick in order to get extra money out of her. I'd be curious to know if they even did that properly. And what, you know what I'm saying? Like there's so much with this story, but to Al's point, I'd rather pay the extra, whatever it's going to be. And I know sometimes the disparity can be really large. I'd rather pay it y'all when it comes to your health and your freedom. And, and, you know, the BBL is one of the most dangerous and risky surgeries of all the cosmetic surgeries. So to give her a surgery that is very dangerous is crazy. At, at, at her age. At, especially at her age. I have a friend that's close to my age. Actually, we're uh, close in age. She went to go, she went to the Dominican Republic and she fixed her breast implants. As she was being um, put under, the, the, uh, the, the nurse said, I do lipo for you. I do lipo for you. And my, my friend was just like, oh, okay, whatever. But she was going under as they were asking her for her consent, trying to, make, and they did it and they botched her stomach up. And I'm like, this is again, like y'all said, this is why you do it in America, pay the extra money. Cause you're going to pay in the front end. We're going to pay in the back end. Back end. Mm -hmm. I want to read this message from Tam Tam. Tam Tam said, oh yeah. It's about to be the hottest thing at the nursing home. <laughs> and what about Monique Anderson said, fashion nobody needs to hire her. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. Coming up, find out why Kiki Palmer's mother is calling out Usher. Oh, this story is sad. We'll see you shortly. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. What do you think the most bougie state in the United States is? Is this black bougie or white bougie? <laughs> There's a difference. McMillan and Mara. I'm not black bougie. I'm trying to be. <laughs> You're just bougie. I'm just too poor. <laughs> Every Thursday. Listen, if I had more money, I would be so bougie. You black bougie adjacent. All your friends are black bougie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> On Fox Soul. I'm in the same boat. I'm living, I'm living vicariously through them. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change.
There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back. Yo, our soulmates are off the chain. They keep putting turtles in the chat. And real quick, the soulmates in Houston that came down, I said, we have such great fans and viewers and supporters. They even know our commercials. What were they doing in the uh, audience queue? Like, we go to break, they'd be like, freedom. It's what like. <laughs> they just started talking. I guess there's a freedom commercial. And it's so funny. It was the soulmates in the audience that hit me to Riz, the turtle commercial, because <laughs> we don't see what y'all see on our end. So I never knew what the commercial jokes were, y'all. But now that we know that there are some commercials that are bothering y'all, we're going to hope we get some new sponsors so we can stop showing y'all the same commercials and a variety of commercials. You got to email Joyce. Because we can't tell them to stop the commercials. because No, we, we need them. So, <laughs> y'all hang in there a little longer. As we expand, we're going to get some more commercials to mix it up. Oh my God, they're putting all turtles in the chat right now. It's all awesome. right. <laughs> okay. All right, y'all. The internet is buzzing after Kiki Palmer's petty baby daddy, Darius Jackson, leaked audio of her mother, Sharon, calling Usher gay. Take a listen. Now, Sharon responded to her comments on social media, wrote, the lie I told about Usher was to get Darius to stop abusing my daughter on account of his jealousy. Wow. What are your thoughts on this? Q, you scratching your neck. You look like you itching to say something. I'm going to go to you first. Good try, Mama Sharon. We're going to let it slide, though, because we understand. We Listen, we understand what you're going through right now. That answer was reverse engineered. <laughs> Convenient cute but you meant what you said you said it with your whole chest kiki probably called him was like mm -hmm. now why did you have to go off and say that or whatever the case may be i'm like why did you say that and now you was feeling bad worried about your daughter's relationship with us but here's the thing usher is too busy uh breaking up other people happy apartments <laughs> at that vegas residency he probably didn't even catch wind of it but i do respect you enough miss sharon to at least care about the relationship enough to come back and take ownership of cleaning it up because you understand the importance of working relationships. That phone call was a mess. Yeah. Al, what do you think? I, I agree with you. That phone call was a mess. This, this is not good. I don't care what anybody says. Now, we know that she wants to protect her daughter, Kiki, but at the same time, Sharon is, is looking a little bit unhinged, and that just ain't cute at all. And I, I hope it's not more like this because this is now going to start to mess with her credibility, if you ask me. Now, let me share with you something. On this phone call, it was just so gross. She called Usher gay. Then she called Usher bisexual. Then she called Usher gay again. She called Darius a dick sucker. She called him a limp dick. She called him gay. But I'm so confused. Sharon, your daughter is bisexual. Your daughter, if we use the same meter, the same measuring stick, your daughter is gay. Usher got four kids and married twice. Your daughter has a kid. What are you saying? You said that to stop him from beating on your daughter. Some ain't adding up. I'm not buying it. I thought it was disgusting to listen to and disgusting to even try to justify. Let's all do better, please. I understand how angry you be if your daughter comes to you and says, look, this guy put his hands on me. And listen, sometimes people argue real nasty and unfair. And this is an, an example. I personally don't do that. But people, I get people that do, I guess. I hate that Usher caught a strike. Mm -hmm. I hate, Usher don't bother nobody. He's, but I, I, I think Usher is a sweetheart. I've never got that from him. I think Usher stays out of the way. You know, we don't really hear much. We had the one scandal years ago, but we don't really hear much about Usher. He's in Vegas with like the hottest show I've ever seen in my life. 
minding his own business. Now I get if a man is extremely jealous about someone that's around you. Cause I've had to do this to men before. Oh, that's my friend. He's gay. Right. I, I've actually had to do that before. And then I had to break up with that person. Cause you don't want to be around someone. You have to like, lock, you know, pander to them. So they don't feel threatened by a male around you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. She went hard. She went hard. And the only way this is going to be kind of okay is when we get solid, 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 like when we see that tape, because then we're going to be like, you know what? All bets are out the window. We don't give a damn what she said about him because he put his hands. He really beat her up like that. But this is an ugly case. I hate it. Um, don't remember that internet star, JJ Fresh? Ice, JJ, Ice, JJ Fresh. Remember he was like an internet uh, meme? Do you remember him? I don't know. Oh, y'all look, y'all look him up. He that's what baby um Kiki's baby daddy's giving a little bit. All right. A political brawl almost took place on Capitol Hill yesterday. Ooh, the whites was getting into it. But guess who was there to save the day? 105-year-old Senator Bernie Sanders. Take a look. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold on. Big oh, hold, stop it. Is that your right. solution every poll? No, no, sit down. Sit down. Okay. You know, you're a United States senator. Sit down. Active. Oh, okay. okay. Sit down, please. All right. Can I respond? Mr. Hold Schiff. it. Hold it. If Hold we can't, no, I have the mic. Said. I'm sorry. This is Hold what it. he said. You'll have your time. Okay. Can I respond? Oh, no, you can't. <laughs> this is a hearing. Can y'all imagine, okay, Bernie Sanders coming between a fight Listen, Bernie is old, but when he raised his voice, like he real honorary. Like he do make me a little nervous. Like he probably was a, a beast back in his day. Al, what do you think about this? These senators are acting so ratchet. The House of Representatives is so ghetto right now, and it's the whites. Yeah, I think that was the Senate, though. Um, right? That's the Senate. That's the U.S. That's Senate. Senate. Yeah, but you they know she, you know she didn't no, go that, to that, a that, you that, know that, she didn't go to a credit college and <laughs> she, she don't know the different branches. They of both, that. They're both no, ghetto. They're both ghetto. Marjorie Taylor Greens in the in the house. They both ghetto. I just think they that, are. That floor, <laughs> that floor was too small. Uh, not enough people in there to be the House, Claudia. I mean, to be the Senate. I mean, to be the representative, the House of Representatives. Anyway, uh, the guy that stood up is a is a former MMA fighter, and he is a what you'd be calling a sitting uh, U.S. Senate. He's you know waiting to be elected in the future. But these two always go at it. They've been going at it forever, and I love the fact that Bernie Sanders actually stood up. Bernie Sanders to me is what old politics or what politics really should be, and how it really should like come across. I mean, he just encompasses everything. He's the type of guy that always keeps order. He's the type of guy that always keeps accountability. And he's the type of guy that wants to make sure that our U.S. Constitution is upheld and respected at all times. And these two took an opportunity to disrespect it, and he wasn't happy having it. My hat goes off to Bernie Sanders for keeping the order. Uh, Q, what do you think? Child, when Senator Mullins had stood up, he had turned me on in between my legs and in my butt, honey. Oh, God. Just turned on. I was like, oh, it was just something. Oh, I'm not going to be no speak like this. It was just something so hot. About That's that edible talking to I you. Know, I don't know what it was. Right. It was something. But um, I'm supposed to be, if I had to be pulled up in professional because I'm on a black platform and Sister Soldier raised me right, then I'm going to say, those thugs, if it was black people and we were yeah. doing it, it would be plastered all across the New York. Oh, Claudia, I took your shit. Huh? Because you're normally the one who does that. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, well, yeah, that's what I want to say. If it was us, this would have been turned into a whole Time Magazine situation. I was surprised, and you, thank you for correcting me, it was the Senate, because the Senate is the one that usually has more decorum. They're the ones that have a, they're the more elite the house has been real ghetto with Marjorie Taylor Greene and Bobert and the rest of them and Matt Gates. They've been really wilding out. So now the Senate is spilling over. So the whole throw the whole Senate, like the whole Congress away. Like it is a hot mess. I think there's going to be a fight before the end of the year, before the end of next year, a fist fight. Mm -hmm. All right. Terrence Howard is planning to sue Paramount after revealing that he has only made $12,000 from the hit film Hustle and Flow. Terrence said, uh, instead of putting my name as Terrence Howard, performing the songs they put performed by DJ, which was a character in the film. He added, guess what they owed? Guess what? They owed DJ. So the performance royalties went to Paramount. What are your thoughts on this story? Al? 
Listen, I always feel like if anybody took advantage of you, then you should get um, your money. Like you should get some type of reciprocity or something like that. However, Terrence Howard, let me just talk to you for a minute. You way too long in the tooth to be making these type of mistakes when you're negotiating your contracts. First of all, you've been in the business over a decade you have already come off of one of the best best movies ever the best man making you gazillions of money throwing your career into a different uh, hemisphere how in the world could you wow. let this happen <laughs> we done ran out of time. That, that's what we was about to ask how could he let this happen claudia <laughs> we done ran out of time we can't say nothing uh twelve thousand dollars damn i got more than that from my movie on tubi that's messed up. All right. Thank you to Al Reynolds and Funky Donnie for doing that thing. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Fox Face Off. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And Funky, you can answer the question tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>